Hello everyone, this is a lesson on ratio and proportion checkpoint challenge questions. And we're going to see different exercises on ratios and proportions. These are ratios, this is the first exercise of ratios. This is also a ratio number two, ratio question. Proportions, number three. These are graphs that show different rate of change and proportions. And graph equations, direct proportion and inverse proportion. This is called this, this number six. Inverse proportion, number seven. Volumes and ratios. And algebraic fractions as ratios. And let's start the lesson. Number one. Jamal, Claire, and Peter share some money in the ratio 3.5.9. Peter got 60 pounds more than Claire. How much money did Jamal get? First thing to do here is to write the ratio down. So what we have in the exercise is the difference of money between Peter and Claire. So the difference are 60 pounds. And what we need to find here is the amount of Jamal. The amount of money of Jamal. This is a, a ratio question, and what we have is the difference of money between C and P. The difference of money is 60 pounds. So we need to find the difference on the ratio. The difference on the ratio it will be 9 minus 5. Nine minus five is four. So the sixty is the pounds here, and the four are the units on the ratio. Dividing the difference of money by the units, I can find how much money correspond per one unit. So doing the division, we can find the amount per unit. So 60 divided by 4 gives us 115. So every one unit is 15 pounds per unit. So now I can answer the question. 15 pounds is per one unit. Jamal has three units. So this means that Jamal got 3 times 15. 45 pounds. This is the answer. 45 pounds. This is the number one. Number two. In a shop. The number of apples and the number of pears are in the ratio 5.3. The number of pears and the number of oranges are in the ratio 4.5. The total number of apples, pears, and oranges in the shop is 235. How many apples are there in the shop? These are problem solving questions with two different ratios. So it's a useful here to write the ratio in a simple way. So we write them as apples, pears, 
then we also write oranges as well. So I have one ratio for all of them. And I put the numbers. Apples, pears, 5.3. P and O is 4.5. We also know the total number of apples, the total. So we know the total as well. We can also make the last column to be the total number. And because I have the total, 235. This is the total fruit. And what I want to find is the total of the apple. We can also find the total of the pears and the total of the oranges. So this is what we need to find, the total amount of apples, number of apples. Now you can see from the ratio that some numbers are missing. And, but some numbers uh, we have, and which numbers do we have, are the second column. The second column, we have the second column for the first ratio and the second ratio. So using the second column, because we have the numbers, This is the second column, three and four. So we can use these numbers and using three and four. Because I have the numbers three and four, I can change the ratio into a lowest common multiple of three and four. So to have 12, for example. So if I change the ratio from three to 12, I need two times the first ratio by four and the second ratio by three. So I have the same numbers because if I have the same numbers in the second column, I can combine the two ratios. So what I'm going to do now is to combine the two ratios in one ratio. So I'm going to times the first ratio by four. So this gives you 20 dot four, uh, 12. And the second ratio by three. So it's four times three and five times three. And now I have a ratio with all of the fruits. And the total of this ratio is 20 plus 12 plus 15 is 47. So all I need to do now is to compare the 47 with the total. 47 is the total on the ratio. I compare them by division to find the scale factor. So the scale factor here is 5 which means if I times the ratio by 5, I can find the totals. So 5 times 20 give me the missing totals. So 5 times 20 is the answer for the apples. So the answer here is 100. I times 20 times the 5, and I found the 100. This is the total of the apples that is missing. And this is the exercise two on this lesson. Combining ratios. This is very useful. Combining two different ratios into one ratio to help us answer the question. Let's go to number three. Twelve bags of crisps have a total mass of 360. Crisps have 550 calories per 100 grams. Find the number of calories per bag of crisps. So I have 12. So this is a kind of proportion problem. 
So we write the down the proportions. 12, this is the number of bucks. The total mass is 360 mass bucks. And yes, so creeds have 100 grams. So, to find the number of calories per pack, first of all, I need to find the mass of one pack. Okay, so if 12 packs have 360, this is a direct proportion. So I can divide 360 by 12 and find one pack. So 360 by, divided by 12 give us 30, 30 grams. So one pack has 30 gram mass. So one pack is 30 grams. In this case, I need to do to go to a hundred, okay? Because five hundred fifty is per one hundred. So how many times the thirty grams go to a hundred? So this is a hundred divided by thirty is three point three recurring. So I need to do hundred over. 3 times, yes, we can do, yes, 3 over 100. So the ratio here, the proportion to take is 30 over 100 because I don't have 100, I have a part of 100. So the proportion is 30 over 100 and I times by 550 gal uh, calories. This is so this is the proportion I need to take on the 550 to give me per buck because one buck has 13 grams and every 100 grams give you 550 calories. So the proportion to use is 30 over 100. We simplify the fraction, we divide by 10 and both by 100 and we do 3 times 55. So 3 times 55 give us 165 grams is a final answer. So 165 grams is per one pack. So this is an exercise on direct proportions. So this is per pack. I change the 55, 55 calories in per pack by using the proportion 30 over 100. And this is the number three. Let's continue to the number four. Number four. The four graphs show proportional relationships between X and Y. Three of the four graphs are described by equations in the table. Match each equation with the letter of the graph it describes. Here I have four types of graphs and the next page I have the equations. And I need to decide which equation represents which graph. And let's take from the first equation. The first one is y equals kx. Sometimes it's helpful here to just see the equation, okay, by looking at the equation and see the effect of increasing one of the, of the x. What is the effect of y? In this case, if I increase the x, because the x is division, I reduce the y. So this is a type of in inverse proportion data. It's a type of data that is inverse proportion. And from the graph, I can use some logic and see which 
graph represents the inverse proportion. The first one is impossible. Both are increasing. The second is also increasing because both are increasing, x and y. The second is possible. Okay, The only graph that represents inverse proportion is the c because when you increase the x, you have less of y. So, the graph c is the answer here. Okay, the graph c. Let's take the second equation. The second equation, you need to think here, if I increase the x, what happens to the y? Because I multiply by k, the y still increases. So if I change the x, if I increase the x, the y also increase. And which graph represents this relationship? Both of them, all of them actually, except the C, but the right graph is the A, because the A represents a straight line, and it's a constant change. The slope is change, is, the, is constant, comparing to the other graphs. So the A is the answer here. So the ans right answer for the second graph is the A, because the gradient is fixed, is constant. And is the graph of a straight line anyway. The y equals kx squared. Now by writing down the equation, y equals kx squared, what happens if I increase the x? The y increases by more than the change of x. And the x squared graphs are described para parabolas by curve that are parabolas. So it's very easy to identify the right graph because the only parabola that you can see here is the b. It's a part of the parabola. You don't have the negative part because the x cannot take negative values possibly. That's why you have one part of the parabola and this is the graph b. This is the graph b and the answer is b. And that's all for this exercise. And let's go to number five. The number five is in direct proportion. And y is directly proportional to the x. When the y is 160, the x is 8. Find a formula for y in terms of x. Then direct proportion have a formula that is a very good to memorize if you haven't done so. The formula for indirect proportion is y equals k times the x. k is the constant of proportionality. And because we have one point, one pair of data, it's a good idea to put this point into the equation to find the constant of proportionality. And if I use this point here, I can find the value of the k, which is very useful here. I can make the equation more specific. 160 divided by 8 gives you 20. So my equation is y is equal to 20x. This is an equation that describes direct proportion. Direct proportion. And the formula that describes the y in terms of x is the y equals 20 times x. If I increase x by one unit, the y will increase by 20. So let's go to number b. Calculate the value of the y when the x is 15. It's very easy now because I found the k, I have the equation. All I need to do is to put the numbers. So when the x is 15, I can very easily find the y value. 20 times 15 give you the right value is 300 300 is the answer and let's go to number six number six is in direct proportion again but in s is indirectly proportional to the square of t the p is directly proportional so you still follow the formula of the direct proportion, but you need to write the y, the p. We write the p is equal to k times 
the t square write the equation in this way here we need to give a comment Julius says that when the t is doubled the value of p is also doubled but is this true let's check in order to check this statement and see whether it's true or not we need to follow the general rules the general formula of the double so it says here when the t is double but let's double the t and make it for example 2k instead of t let's use the 2k 2z i don't want to use the k because k is already there and see the effect of the p so the p is equal to k times 2z i need to use brackets because the t is all squared and see the effect on the p so if i use 2z here i double the z into 2 you may use 2t but it's okay to use a different variable so you can this give you 4 k z square which means because the t is also squared the effect is four times the p changes by a factor of four and that's why he she is wrong so the factor here is not two but it is a four Let's go to the next exercise. Now this is an inverse proportion and we know that the m is inversely proportional to the n square. m equals 75, the n is 4, find the value of the n when the m is 48. Here it's useful to know the formula for the inverse proportion and the formula for the inverse proportion is k over n. Here it says n square, so I do n square. I put the numbers to find the constant of proportionality. So I have 75 equal k over 4 square is 16. So the k value is 16 times 75, 1200. And now I have a specific formula that describes this inverse proportion the data. Now I can find the value of the n when the m is 48. All I need to do is to place the value of the m into this formula and solve the equation for n. To find the value of the n you use cross multiplication methods or you times both sides by n square and divide by 48 divide by 48 and I have 25 so the n is 5 this is the right value for the n and let's go to the next exercise 8 Philip has two cubes the side length of cube is 1 1 is 6 meters the volumes of cube 1 and cube 2 are in the ratio 8 dot 27. Find the surface area of the cube 2, the second one. So we need to write them in a ratio. I have the cube 1 and the cube 2. The length is, has, the side length of cube 1 is 6. The volumes are in the ratio 8.27. And we want to find the surface area. So the area here is missing. This is what we need to find. We have the length one of the length is 6. We have the ratio of the volume. Because it's not possible to go from the volume to the area, 
I can go to the length scale factor from the ratio of the volume. I can take the cubic root of the numbers and can find the ratio of the length. So if I take the cubic root of 8, this gives me a 2. And the cubic root of 27, this gives me a 3. So I go from the volume to the length by taking the cubic root of the volumes ratios. So the ratio of the lengths are 2.3. And since we have the length of the first cube as 6, then to go from 2 to 6, the scale factor is 3. So I times both on the ratio by 3 and I have the actual length of both of the cubes. So it's 6.9. And now I'm going to go to the, from the length to the area. A cube, let's see how you find the area of the cube. So I want the surface area of the second one with length 9. I found the actual length of the second one. The length is 9. And now to find the surface area is very easy. We found one face. One face is 9 squared, which is 81. And I times by the number of faces. So 81 times I have 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 times 81. 6 times 81 is 486. And this is for the cube, the second one, cube 2. So the surface area of the second cube is 486 square centimeters. Okay, the, the area is always square centimeters. Let's continue the lesson. Let's go to number 9. Number 9 give you, give us, give you a ratio in terms of x. x plus 1 dot x minus 1 is equal to x plus 1 dot 2x. And we want to find the value of the x. A ratio is a like a fraction. So I can change a ratio into fractions and convert this equation into algebraic fractions. So I can write it as x plus 1 over x minus 1 is equal to the x plus 1 over 2x. One way to solve this equation with fractions, we use cross multiplication methods. So I have 2x times x plus 1 is equal to the x minus 1 times the x plus 1. This is the difference of two squares that can that is equivalent to the x squared minus 1. This is the identity. x minus 1 times x plus 1 is the identity of difference of two squares. And the left-hand side is 2x squared plus 2x. All I need to do is to solve this equation. And then I can find the values of the x. So this equation gives you 1x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. This is a quadratic. And the right way to solve this is by using the quadratic formula. And let's use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is this one. So I prepare the fraction. So it is negative 2 plus minus square root of 2 square minus 4. And this is 0, which means we have only one solution. Let's check here 4 times 1 times divided by 2. So the 
here we have negative one is the final answer. The square root is zero here, so the value of the x, you have normally two solutions, but this one has only one, is negative one. And this is the answer to this exercise, which brings us to the end of this lesson. And if you like the lesson, please subscribe so you can see lessons like this one in the future at different topics. Thank you for watching and please like the video if you enjoyed this video. Thank you. Bye.